Well, hello there, beach friends. Are you ready for another delightful beach walk? I really, really wanted to see the Sanibel Lighthouse. I have not been over to Lighthouse Beach Park since Hurricane Ian, and I just really wanted to go over there. Now, the park has since opened since I filmed this, so the park was closed when I came here to check it out. And like I said, I just really, really wanted to see that lighthouse, that iconic structure. And along the way, we're probably gonna see a couple of seashells. So we're gonna pick those up. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna break open a sand dollar so we can talk a little bit about what goes on inside of those. So not to worry, we are gonna have a absolutely beautiful day. I'm gonna introduce you to a new app that I'm kind of obsessed with. And there it is. This is the as close as I've really been able to come to the Sanibel Lighthouse since Hurricane Ian. So Sanibel Island is open. You can absolutely go there. However, we are still recovering from a major hurricane. So you're going to see a little bit of construction and maybe a couple of those pardon our appearance signs. We are desperately trying to get back up and running so people can come and enjoy our beautiful beaches. So there's a lighthouse there in the distance. That will be our destination today. And there's one of our pardon our appearance signs. But like I said, not to worry. The beaches are gorgeous, and that's where we're gonna be spending our time. So if you're ready to see what is out there for us today, let's go to the beach. Okay, we're gonna leave construction behind us in three, two, one. Look at that, just like that. All right, I might hear a little bit of banging and stuff of construction, but look at this view. So we are here on Sanibel Island. It is open, it is ready for you to walk its beaches. I will tell you there's not there's a few there are places that are open to stay there are restaurants that are open as well and the beach like I said the beaches are open it's just we're a little beat up so if you can kind of get over that aspect of it we have a beautiful island that you can come visit that is a turtle nest right there that yellow those yellow poles that were kind of marked off so that's there to protect the turtle nest and would you look at this beach? I have the place to myself. And a couple of seashells. Awesome. So we are going to be headed that away. About two miles down the beach is the lighthouse. And so we're just going to, I'm going to hoof it down there because the actual beach parking lot was not open. So I had to walk. And that's fine by me because I'm pretty much always looking to see what's on the beach anyway. So here we have a prickly cockle on the relatively common side, but still just a really beautiful shell on the inside. And then your disc docenia. Those show up anytime you have a really kind of windy, stormy weather. The disc docenias tend to kind of populate the beach. So there's a little bit of stuff here. It's mostly the common things I'm kind of seeing. Tiny bit of seaweed. Okay, here is, oh, a little buttercup leucine. Oh, just beautiful. I'll have to flip them over to see how buttery they're gonna be. All right, couple of bivalves. We have that discosenia and a buttercup leucine. All right, I'm gonna check out the conditions in the water because I do like to shell in the water. It gives me the feeling like I'm getting first crack at these shells, which is totally not true, but I just like being in the water. Unfortunately, there wasn't all that much there. Visibility wasn't great, so I keep checking, but for now, I'm gonna stick to the beach. Oh, pretty. So that is a calico scallop. It's got a little, little missing pieces here and there, but it's got that beautiful like sunburst pattern. So I'm gonna hold on to that lovely calico scallop. Of course it's lovely. And this is a slipper snail. Slipper snails are kind of cool. They're normally kind of piled on top of each other. They like to make friends, they like to hang out with other snails. So that is a slipper snail. 
another scallop, but this one has been sitting in low oxygen sand for a little while. So it has got that black color. It's kind of a chemical reaction that happens to the shell. Excellent. Right after that black scallop, I have a white one. This is a bay scallop. A lovely white bay scallop. So Sanibel does typically, if I'm looking for scallops, I head on over to Sanibel when I can. That is a relatively common shell. That is a cut ribbed arc. It just happens to be one of the arcs that I just kind of like the shape of those. So I do collect, even though it's on, well, frankly, I collect a lot of shells that are on the common side. I don't care. They're just pretty. So that is a calico scallop. Pretty, pretty common. I do collect those. They're lovely and they're always different patterns like the snowflake thing. So I like to just kind of check them out and appreciate how lovely each individual shell can be. Even the plain ones I get, even if they have nothing on them, then I kind of find beauty in that too. Yeah, I, you know what, it, it just show me a shell and I'll probably tell you something I like about it. It's another cool bay scallop. That's got an interesting color. And so for me, for somebody who's at the beach a lot, seeing things that are unusual is also kind of neat. Beautiful calico scallop, excellent. I definitely won't go home empty handed. Oh, there are turtle volunteers. So there's volunteers and what they do is they come out first thing in the morning and they look for turtle tracks. And then if the turtle has come and laid a nest, it will mark them off. So that's what those yellow things are. The turtle team has come out, found a nest, marked it off, and then they'll monitor it. And so they'll try to protect it. If it's in an area where there's critters like raccoons and stuff, they will put like a mesh a metal grate over the nest so the babies can get out but nothing can get in to kind of disturb them so i do notice that the shells are kind of thinning out and under those kind of conditions normally i would turn around i would try to change my collecting method but i have a destination in mind this time so there's nobody behind me pretty much lots of shells here for sure What do we got? A broken paper fig? Okay. That's fine. I do tend to find those paper figs here on Sanibel. Nobody there and nobody that way. So I really feel like at this point, like I practically have the place to myself. Alrighty, another calico scallop with a little barnacle on there. So I'm gonna like quick kind of give like a little blow in that barnacle just to make sure it's empty. So that silly barnacle has done its thing, expired, and we just kind of have that little volcano looking thing left. All right, juvenile fighting conch. Uh-oh, a little, all right, that's just a barnacle. So safe, there's nothing in there. Always check your shells, make sure they're empty. You don't need hitchhikers. A buttercup leucine, oh dear. So it would appear that perhaps this animal expired by somebody eating it. So a drill of some sort, perhaps a moon snail or one of the murexes or one of the drills drilled a hole in that critter and slurped out the insides. So that's how those, it's a snail eat snail world out there. And I just think it's kind of neat to find these shells with holes in them. I'll keep that. An operculum. Delightful. So that is the trap door of a lightning whelk shell. I can tell by the way it's kind of, and lightning whelks open on the left. So I can just kind of tell that is the operculum from a lightning whelk. Now these I've seen, and I just knew what they were, but I just didn't really ever pay all that much attention to it. So this is a red mangrove propagule, and it's kind of a fancy name for a seed, but essentially what that is, is that will help grow another red mangrove. But what also they do is they can create islands. So see those little things out in the water there? Those are mangrove islands. And so these little propagules, if they find an area that has conditions that are favorable for a red mangrove to grow, it's possible that this can create an island, which is great. We need as much beach as we can with erosion and hurricanes and everything else that's going on down here. So that is a red mangrove propagule. This, oh man, that look at that. So that's like a juvenile fighting conch. So it's not quite little, not quite big, just, just pretty. 
So a majority of the beachfront properties that are here on Cinnabel are not occupied right now. They are being repaired from that nasty hurricane. Now you do have people living on the island, people who were in the homes. The condos, that's going to be harder. It's just there's just a bigger building to repair. I think probably a lot more of the homeowners have been able to repair and get themselves back in their homes. But there are places that are open. Don't be afraid to come because there's definitely things to do here. Like pick up seashells like another calico scallop. I know you knew what that was. Beautiful calico scallop. Yep. I'll go right in the seashell bag. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, I know a whole bunch of things went on. Yay, fighting conch. Bummer there's a hole, but kind of cool, because then it's like a peekaboo thing going on where you can kind of see inside. So I want to hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that broken kind of peekaboo shell. Oh, dear. Well, yeah, there was, and I don't know why, maybe because there hasn't been a lot of people on the island, there was a lot of garbage. So I picked up a lot, which is great because I do like helping the environment and just helping keeping the beaches clean. So at the very end, I'm gonna weigh that and kind of let you know how much garbage I picked off the beach today, in addition to a couple of seashells, like these kitten paws. So those are kitten paws. They kind of, they're usually, well, they're always that white and orange color, but all the little fingers, you'll have all sorts of different variations of them. Which is kind of fun whole bunch of little kitten paws all right lighthouse is getting bigger I see it now we'll get there we'll get there oh and then this is a it's a big shell but yeah yeah it's a piece of the big shell so it is all pitted we call that when they have all those little little holes in the shell we call that pitted so that is a pitted giant lightning well just a piece though so but oh, you'll check it out because you never know there's a pair of lovely bivalves. We have the calico scallop and a kitten paw. So what I mean, they're kind of weird. It's going to be that orange and white color, but the shapes are sometimes different. And I figured I'd come up and check out the rack line or the higher rack line. So you're going to have different stuff up here. You're going to have a lot lighter stuff and stuff that maybe was buried. That is a horse conch egg casing. That's how it kind of, they call it kind of like, like a loaf of bread. So that is from a horse conch. This is from a true tulip. Luckily, it looks empty. Terrific. That too, horse conch. Okay, that one next to it is also a horse conch. We have here some apple murex egg casings. So that's what that is. That's from an apple murex or a couple of apple murexes. That is from a lightning whelk. And those I like to check because sometimes they you see what it yeah sometimes there can be the little babies in there and they don't make it out now this one has that little hole in it so it could be baby shell it could be sand i can't really tell what's going on here but since there's kind of something something in there i'm going to keep that i'm going to put that in my shell bag now i know that the babies are not viable because it is dry if it was wet or questionable i put it back in the water this is from a pear whelk. It looks just like the lightning whelk, but those little discs are smaller. And this looks empty. So you can see the, the little hole where the little babies came out, and then it's empty. Yay, so that I'm gonna leave. This I'm gonna leave at the beach. So I will kind of keep checking them out. Okay, getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, another egg casing from a lightning whelk. They are funny looking, aren't they? Let's see, empty or collecting? All right, kind of looks empty to me, which is good. That makes me happy. All the little babies are out there eating, getting bigger, doing their thing, excellent. So different stuff in this higher rack line, right? Lighter shells, probably the paper figs will be up here. Uh-oh, all right, another one. Yeah, another lightning look. What? stuff in there so I'm gonna collect that and this and I'm um, to be fair I was looking for seahorses I have found seahorses up here and up in this upper rack line but 
No spoilers, I did not find any seahorses today. So that is another lump. That is from an apple murex. And when the apple murexes lay their eggs, they kind of find all their friends and they get together and they do it together. So they create these like mounds and little pieces will break off what I'm finding. But that is also from apple murex shells. And check out this next one, look at this. It's, I didn't dig it up. I mean, it's just it, this huge thing of apple murex egg casings. Cool. A knicker nut. Yeah, there's a little there's a little seed inside that gray thing that kind of shakes around. Kind of hear it. So it's a little gray knicker nut or knicker bean they call them. Well, actually, I guess the bean would be the outside, and that's the actual nut part. And it comes from the word the German word marble. A knicker nut. Now, pen shells are quite lovely on the inside, and I periodically talk about them. I don't really collect them, but this one's kind of weird because a barnacle and stuff kind of got in between the layers of the shell, and so the shell had to grow around it. So the shell has all these like bumps and weird things going on, and I like that. It's interesting. And plus the pretty nicker on the inside. So I'm going to hold on to this kind of weird, kind of weird pen shell. Why not? I don't have too many of those anyway. Another knicker nut. Yay. Probably not going to find that like floating around in the water. You're going to need to come up to the to the higher rack line up here with a uh, All right, got another lightning walk. There was a bunch of them, I'm not really surprised. Plus again, there hasn't been a lot of people here, which was why I was looking for those seahorses, but I'll be happy with all these other fun things. All right. Another lightning walk egg casing. Now, what are you doing here? That's a Cuban brown snail. Now, I have found them on the beach before, but uh, it's a land snail. That is not a critter that you're gonna find in the ocean. But, you know, cause it's Florida and it kind of hangs out by the beach, sometimes those shells will make it here. Like this channeled duck clam, also called a sailor's ear or an elephant ear, a pair of white shells, some cool texture on them, neat. Ooh, a paper fig, oh, oh. So the aperture does have a little chip in it. You know what? That's okay. It's kind of a little bit slower in the summer for collecting shells. It just kind of, the shells are there, but they're out in the water and the sand kind of covers them. So there is like a, a season for it. And the summer is a little bit slower and that's fine because I feel like I slow down and get a little more interested in things and kind of learn more. So we're going to talk about like different things that is a broad ribbed cardita. A pair of them have that ombre tone. Aren't they pretty? I really like the broad ribbed carditas. They're very common, but it's like them anyway. All right, they're now making some progress. Oh, and there's a big osprey on the beach. Actually, I wasn't sure if that was a bald eagle or what that was. It looked big though. So that's one of our shorebirds. We'll typically go out and look for fish. So that's one of our ospreys. I love seeing all the different critters here. Okay, there we go, almost there. Now, this is something that I also learned. Did you know that in most cases, collecting feathers in the United States is illegal under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918? So that prohibits the possession of feathers, parts, and eggs. So if you see a feather, don't collect it because apparently it's illegal. I didn't know that, but now I do. Now I do, oh dear. Okay, so that's kind of a substantial piece of debris in the water. So we are getting a bit closer. I don't know what it is. I didn't inspect it. There's the lighthouse, so we are getting there. There's another turtle nest. Don't bother the turtles at all. Okay, so I finally made it here. They're obviously doing repairs. Um, the, this, when I was here, I didn't know it was gonna open like the following week. So this is about a week and a half before this park actually opened. Okay, it looks like the restroom building survived. That's good. And the park, it used to be many acres of this lush, beautiful park. I, you know, I'm still gonna come here. It's just really, really beat up. All right, what's here? Giant Atlantic cockle. All right, grab that just in case I find some tinies. And it's nice, it got chunky. Look at all this, the chunks here on the beach. Excellent. All those docemias, they've probably been here a while. 
Again, because this beach is open, so unless you walked here, you weren't getting in. So it was only people who were in the area and could hoof it over here. So lots of those docenias. We're going to make it around the corner there. Oh, now I'll stop and pick up another knicker nut. Oh, and a wee little, oh, it's got a little bit beat up. That is a wee little paper fig. I'll hold on to it anyway. It's summer. I make lots more exceptions in summer. Now this I'm gonna wash out and I'm going to let it dry because it's hinged and it's kind of still moving around. But if I keep it closed and I let it dry out like that, it'll kind of stay like that little heart shaped. So I'm gonna do that with that particular shell. There it is. Oh, oh lighthouse. I haven't seen you in so long. Now that was one of the things I did evacuate and I went up to Orlando and while I was up there, as you can imagine, information was sketchy at best. So at one point I did hear that the lighthouse fell and that was kind of devastating for me. I was mostly because of the human impact. I was, if that happened, I just was afraid of how many people were impacted. So a lot of people were impacted. I just wanted most people to survive. So you do see, um, I believe that is the leg. So the lighthouse never did fall. It stood, but it did lose one of its legs. And I think that's what we see in the water there. It is the fourth leg. So the lighthouse buildings that used to be here, yeah, they're all gone. <sighs> and all right, a big chunk of concrete. I actually think that is still there in the water, even after the, um, this beach opened. And I believe that's the other leg. I think that is the fourth leg. So the lighthouse kept three legs. See that back one there is kind of different. So they propped it up. And I, I think that other piece, I'm guessing, still looks pretty on top though, right? Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? I mean, a hurricane came through, so it's just gonna take some time. We'll clean up and life goes on. Critters don't mind, the shells are still here, critters are here. And I do love looking for wintel traps here. Oh man, so it'll be, you know, by the time it's open, the next time I come back here, hopefully it'll be a little bit more cleaned up because I do like coming here to look for wintel traps. So next time, at least the beach is open now, I won't have to hoof it two miles down the beach to get here. I'll be able to park properly and just kind of pop around the corner and look for rental traps. Now, right when I went, it was in the morning. It was the only day I could kind of go out beach combing this week and uh, the tide was up. So for me, the tide was up. I was already, it's in the summer. I was heading to Lighthouse Beach. I actually had a lot of things kind of working against me if I was, if my goal was to find shells, but that wasn't really my goal. My goal was really to just see the Lighthouse Beach. I haven't been here since the hurricane. Is it, I guess it's kind of what I expected. You know, you got your piles of your common shells here. Including another Cuban brown snail, go figure. Unusual to find them to find two in one day. Kind of neat. Someone had sent me a picture and asked if that was an albino moon snail. Wouldn't that have been cool? That is a paper fig intact no pinholes or anything awesome apple murex yep holy cow finally found oh it looks like two apple murex all right that was a little worse for wear it's an apple murex nonetheless and let's see this turkey wing oh dear yeah that i'm gonna leave but i'll hold on to those apple murex right on all right, I've been doing a lot of talking, so it is time for you to enjoy some beach time.
All right, so I've checked out Lighthouse. Check out this this shell. This reminded me of a Rorschach print, that those ink blotch things. So what do you see in that shell? I see sunset. I see a vacation in your future. I see all sorts of things. I see a juvenile fighting conch. Oh, it was a little bit pink. Did you see that? It's pretty. So a very nice fighting conch. Fantastic. And, oh, another Apple Murex. Yeah, that one's in good shape. It's got its little bits and pieces. It's a little, you know, ever so slightly, like, rounded. It's a lovely Apple Murex. Holy cow, look at the color of that. So it is a Calico Scallop. Wow. See, so the color on the reverse side is almost more impressive than that. The color on the front. Awesome. A juvenile fighting conch. All right, so when there is a shell jammed into another shell in the opening there, I'm always really careful to break the shell that's on the inside so I don't break the shell I want to keep. So I never push it up against the aperture because you can, you know, break, break your shell. So just be careful. Try to just bust up the shell you don't want to keep. So you can hold on to that lovely juvenile fighting conch. Now, I don't know why or when I stumbled upon this term, but the term wabi-sabi, it is Japanese, and it means appreciating beauty that is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete in nature. So characteristics of wabi-sabi, it has principles that include asymmetry, roughness, simplicity. So it's a way to appreciate things that aren't necessarily whole, which I thought was kind of cool because sometimes I'll do that. I'll just kind of appreciate something that's a little bit more on the beat up side. I'm not going to keep that particular wabi-sabi shell, but just wanted to share that new term I found. And I'll probably throw that around now and then. Lovely calico scallop. That is not wabi-sabi. That is lovely. Just as it is. Oh man, that is a pretty fighting conch. That is gorgeous. So yeah, it is very common. I don't care. I love them nonetheless. Lovely fighting cock. Oh, and an egg cockle. All right, cool. Something a little different we haven't seen today. Painted egg cockle. I mean, obviously the color's all gone there. Oh, oh, and see, I'm gonna get already happy because I know that that shell has that natural shine. I could already see it underneath the sand and everything. Oh, that's so pretty. Yep. I know it's summer. I know the shell, there's not really, you know, a great shell selection, but I'm still going home happy every time. So usually I do this, I pause before I drag myself off the beach, but I have a couple of other fun things I want to tell you about. There is this app that I've been using. It is called Seek and it is free and it is super fun and it'll help you identify. For me, it's been great with a lot of some of the critters and a lot of the plants. I wish it worked on shells. It doesn't, but I mean, it's like, okay, but it's not great. Wow, look at that view. So if you wanted to know what this beautiful plant was, you can scan it with that app and it's going to tell you that that beautiful plant is sea oats. I'm pretty good with my shells, but not so much with some of the other stuff surrounds me. So the fact that there's this free app that you, with your camera, you can scan it and find out what these plants names are. I thought that was really cool. So if you're interested in the outdoors and nature, download that Seek app, give it a shot. Now, another thing I'd like to tell you about is Anchorworks. They are one of my sponsors and they just offer a wonderful product. They sell a beach anchor system that protects you and everybody else at the beach. One of my subscribers has purchased it. Congratulations, Melinda. And she said it was a lifesaver that she had experienced several days of pretty good wind while on Captiva and Blind Pass and nearly got taken out by others' umbrellas and entire canopies that came flying in their direction. And they had to run out of the way. They had the anchor work system and their umbrella never moved. So if that is not a wonderful testimony of how great this 
product is. And one of the reasons that I continue to promote them and tell you about them, because I do think that, that is a, they offer a wonderful product. This is everything if you happen to order the umbrella. You don't have to, you can use your own. So you're just gonna take the shovel that they give you, you're gonna dig a hole, you're gonna put that bell-shaped anchor in the hole and fill it in. So that's what's gonna keep the umbrella from flying around. You're gonna fill it in and then you just kind of assemble the tray, the umbrella, the next thing you know, you are ready to enjoy the beach without having to worry about your umbrella flying down the beach. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, I do recommend it if you happen to live in an area that has the winds because it is gonna keep your umbrella right where you leave it. I will put a link in the description box below. You can head on over to shopanchorworks.com slash ref slash 13 and use code SWF28 for 28% off. So we are now finally going to leave the beach. And this would be a great time, you know, to find yourself a restaurant or maybe a little shop that's open. Because like I said, there are little things that are open. But I just scurried home with my garbage that ended up weighing 1.92 pounds, which is actually a lot. Normally, it's a couple ounces here and there. So in total, I've managed to remove a little over 34 pounds of garbage off the beach since I've started keeping track, which was April 2022. So this summer, this is kind of a typical collection. There's that pen shell I decided to hold on to. And then a couple of other things, that operculum, the broken fighting conch, a couple of those buttercup lucines, that giant Atlantic cockle looks like I got a piece of a pear book all those knicker nuts a prickly cockles the dystocenias looks like three apple murex a shark eye some of those cuban brown snails got some bay scallops some calico scallops some broadwood carditas the paper figs oh i got a calico scallop or a calico clam in there rather some of those kitten paws the fighting conchs, one olive, the coquina, oh, that, that Rorschach shell. So it just was kind of fun. I really wanted to see the lighthouse. So it was nice finally going over there and seeing the lighthouse, even though it's a little bit beat up. Now, at the very beginning, I told you that at the end of the video, we were gonna break open a sand, sand dollar. We were gonna do that last week, but we're gonna do that now. So a sand dollar is a type of urchin. That is one of the short spine sea urchins that you can find down here. It is empty. It does not have its little Aristotle's lantern, which would be in the center of that. But we have this sand dollar because it's a little bit beat up on the edges. I held onto it specifically so that I can break it open. I don't have to hurt one of the nicer sand dollars. So I did try to take a... Um, a razor and score the, sh it doesn't matter. It just breaks however it's gonna break. And then those are the little dubs. Now that's what they like kind of, I'm not gonna to touch them in that shot. You can really see like there's texture on them. So they actually look like little dubs. Now there's also a little poem. There's a couple of them. The one I like is, now break the center open and here you will release the five white doves awaiting to spread goodwill and peace. Well, isn't that a lovely sentiment? So that's what's inside the sand dollar. There's little treasures inside there if you happen to have that. So if you find a sand dollar that's a little bit broken, maybe go home and you can open that up and see the doves for yourself. Patreons, thank you so, so much for choosing to support me. I appreciate you so very much. I, I, did, I know saying thank you just doesn't seem like enough, but I really, really mean it. Next week, we're heading to Dickman's Island and Kais, I know. And guess what? I'm gonna find a couple of sand dollars and I'm gonna show you what I do to keep most of those intact when I bring them home. So thank you so very much for joining me on my walk to see the lighthouse over on Sanibel. And I hope you have yourself a great week. I'll see you again next Sunday.